Question 1. A client postoperatively develops hypocalcemia. Which of the following would the nurse expect to find? A. Hypotension. B. Bradycardia. C. Hyperreflexia. D. Decreased respiratory rate. Answer, C. Hyperreflexia. Rationale. Hypocalcemia can lead to an increase in neuromuscular excitability. Hyperreflexia, muscle twitching, and tingling around the mouth or fingertips are common signs. Question 2. A patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, is most likely to benefit from which of the following oxygen delivery systems? A. Non-rebreather mask. B. Venturi mask. C. Nasal cannula. D. Simple mask. Answer, B. Venturi mask. Rationale, the Venturi mask is the most accurate means of delivering a precise concentration of oxygen. COPD patients require a specific amount of oxygen, as too much can depress their drive to breathe. Question 3. A client has been diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis, DVT. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate? A. Apply a heating pad to the area. B. Massage the affected extremity. C. Elevate the affected limb. D. Encourage ambulation. Answer. C. Elevate the affected limb. Rationale. Elevation of the affected limb helps to reduce swelling. Massaging or applying heat may dislodge the clot, and ambulation may increase risk of pulmonary embolism. Question 4. A nurse is caring for a patient who has a serum potassium level of 6.5 milli equivalent per liter. Which ECG finding should the nurse anticipate? A. U waves. B. Prolonged PR interval. C. Peaked T waves. D. ST depression. Answer, C. Peaked T waves. Rationale. Peaked T waves are indicative of hyperkalemia. Question 5. A patient is scheduled for a colonoscopy. Which of the following indicates the bowel prep was effective? A. Brown liquid stool. B. Yellow solid stool. C. Green liquid stool. D. Clear liquid stool. Answer. D. Clear liquid stool. Rationale. For a colonoscopy, the bowel must be completely cleaned out. A clear liquid stool indicates an effective bowel prep. Question 6. A client with congestive heart failure has been prescribed furosemide, Lasix. What should the nurse monitor for as a side effect of this medication? A. Hyperkalemia. B. Hypoglycemia. C. Hypocalcemia. D. Hyponatremia. Answer, D. Hyponatremia. Rationale, Lasix is a loop diuretic and can cause loss of sodium leading to hyponatremia. Important note, Lasix can also cause hypokalemia. Question 7. A nurse is teaching a patient with GERD about lifestyle modifications. Which statement by the patient indicates understanding? A. I will drink a cup of milk before bedtime. B. I will eat small, frequent meals throughout the day. C. I will lie down immediately after eating. D. I can continue drinking my morning coffee. Answer. B. I will eat small, frequent meals throughout the day. Rationale. Small, frequent meals can reduce the amount of acid the stomach produces, thereby helping to manage GERD symptoms. Question 8. A nurse is caring for a patient with pancreatitis. Which of the following lab values would the nurse expect to be elevated? A. Albumin. B. Hemoglobin. C. Amylase. D. Platelets. Answer, C. Amylase. Rationale, amylase levels rise with inflammation of the pancreas, as seen in pancreatitis. Question 9. A patient is diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Which symptom would the nurse expect the patient to exhibit? A. Bradycardia. 
B. Constipation. C. Weight gain. D. Heat intolerance. Answer, D. Heat intolerance. Rationale. Heat intolerance is common in hyperthyroidism due to an increased metabolic rate. Question 10. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate for a patient with a suspected pulmonary embolism? A. Administer a diuretic. B. Start the patient on a beta blocker. C. Administer oxygen. D. Encourage the patient to cough and deep breathe. Answer, C. Administer oxygen. Rationale, oxygen is given to improve oxygenation in the presence of a pulmonary embolism. Question 11. A patient has been diagnosed with a hiatal hernia. Which of the following symptoms is most consistent with this diagnosis? A. Diarrhea. B. Heartburn after eating. C. Abdominal cramping. D. Bloody stools. Answer, B. Heartburn after eating. Rationale. A hiatal hernia often causes reflux of gastric contents, leading to heartburn. Question 12. Which of the following foods should be avoided by a patient taking monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, to prevent a hypertensive crisis? A. Apples. B. Chicken. C. Cheese. D. Carrots. Answer, C. Cheese. Rationale, cheese, especially aged cheese, contains tyramine, which can cause a hypertensive crisis when consumed by someone taking MAOIs. Question 13. A nurse is administering blood to a patient. Within minutes of starting the transfusion, the patient complains of back pain and chills. What is the nurse's next action? A. Continue the transfusion, but slow the rate. B. Administer pain medication. C. Stop the transfusion and notify the provider. D. Reassure the patient that this is a common reaction. Answer, C. Stop the transfusion and notify the provider. Rationale. The patient is exhibiting signs of a transfusion reaction. The transfusion should be stopped immediately, the provider notified, and the patient monitored closely. Question 14. A client with Addison's disease would most likely present with which of the following symptoms? A. Hypertension and weight gain. B. Hypotension and hyperpigmentation. C. Tremors and tachycardia. D. Weight loss and palpitations. Answer, B. Hypotension and hyperpigmentation. Rationale, Addison's disease leads to adrenal insufficiency. Common symptoms include hypotension and hyperpigmentation due to increased ACTH production. Question 15. Which of the following lab values would indicate a potential clotting problem in a patient? A. Hemoglobin, 15 g per deciliter. B. Platelet count, 350,000 microliters. C. PT, 25 seconds. D. Sodium, 140 milli equivalent per liter. Answer, C. PT, 25 seconds. Rationale. A prolonged PT, per thrombin time, indicates a clotting problem as it measures the time it takes for the blood to clot. Question 16. A nurse is caring for a patient with Cushing syndrome. Which of the following would be an expected finding? A. Hypoglycemia. B. Muscle wasting. C. Thick skin. D. Moon face. Answer, D. Moon face. Rationale. Cushing syndrome is caused by excessive cortisol production. Moon face, or a round face, due to fat redistribution, is a common sign. Question 17. A patient with glomerulonephritis would most likely present with which of the following symptoms? A. Polyuria. B. Hematuria. C. Hypertension. D. Both B and C. Answer, D. Both B and C. Rationale. 
Glomerulonephritis often leads to hematuria, blood in the urine, and hypertension due to reduced kidney function. Question 18. A nurse is caring for a patient with hepatic encephalopathy. Which medication would be given to reduce ammonia levels in the blood? A. Ranitidine. B. Lactulose. C. Metformin. D. Ciprofloxacin. Answer, B. Lactulose. Rationale. Lactulose is given to promote the excretion of ammonia in the stool, thereby reducing blood ammonia levels. Question 19. A client with diabetes insipidus would most likely present with which of the following symptoms? A. Polyuria and polydipsia. B. Hypoglycemia. C. Weight gain and edema. D. Bradycardia and hypotension. Answer. A. Polyuria and polydipsia. Rationale. Diabetes insipidus is characterized by the inability of the kidneys to conserve water, leading to excessive urination, polyuria, and thirst, polydipsia. Question 20. A patient with a below-the-knee amputation is at risk for which of the following complications? A. Hemorrhage. B. Phantom limb pain. C. Infection. D. Both A and C. Answer. D. Both A and C. Rationale. A patient with a recent amputation is at risk for hemorrhage from the surgical site and potential infection, especially if wound care is not appropriately managed. Question 21. Which of the following is a classic sign of left-sided heart failure? A. Ascites. B. Jugular venous distension, JVD. C. Peripheral edema. D. Crackles in the lungs. Answer. D. Crackles in the lungs. Rationale. Crackles in the lungs are a result of pulmonary congestion, a classic sign of left-sided heart failure. Question 22. A client has been diagnosed with Bell's palsy. Which intervention would be most beneficial for this patient? A. Administer anticoagulants. B. Apply warm compresses to the affected side. C. Initiate a low-sodium diet. D. Encourage prone positioning. Answer. B. Apply warm compresses to the affected side. Rationale, warm compresses can help reduce discomfort and inflammation associated with Bell's palsy. Question 23. A nurse is reviewing a patient's medication list and notes the presence of a thiazide diuretic. For which potential electrolyte imbalance should the nurse monitor? A. Hypernatremia. B. Hyperkalemia. C. Hyponatremia. D. Hypercalcemia. Answer. C. Hyponatremia. Rationale. Thiazide diuretics promote sodium excretion, which can lead to hyponatremia. Question 24. A client with a diagnosis of myasthenia gravis is at risk for which of the following complications? A. Hyperglycemia. B. Myasthenic crisis. C. Deep vein thrombosis. D. Pulmonary edema. Answer. B. Myasthenic crisis. Rationale. Myasthenic crisis is a life-threatening exacerbation of myasthenia gravis that can lead to severe muscle weakness and respiratory failure. Question 25. A patient postoperatively from a thyroidectomy complains of tingling around the mouth and spasms of the hands. The nurse should suspect a. Hyperglycemia. b. Hypocalcemia. c. Hyperkalemia. d. Hyponatremia. 
Answer. B. Hypocalcemia. Rationale. Accidental removal or damage to the parathyroid glands during a thyroidectomy can lead to hypocalcemia. Tingling around the mouth and hand spasms, Trousseau sign, are classic symptoms. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.